Okay, we are beginning the ninth pedic of Masechet Eruvin, uh, page 89. Uh, we're going to be talking about roofs uh, 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 today. Uh, where, and other cases where you actually don't make an Eruv. And, um, you know, when you don't make an Eruv, what are some of the ways that still one can carry? And how do you define a, a space in any case? We're usually, we're used to defining a space at a Shute Achid as uh, a home inside that I own, but you know, what if uh, I don't own it, but I use it all? Uh, so roofs are an interesting uh, application uh, to, to think about. Here's the outline for what we're going to see tonight. Mishnah will have three opinions about roofs, uh, the sages, um, the most stringent, the bimeir, the middle opinion, and the bishimon, the most lenient. Then we'll give a reason for the bimeir, well, he's going to say gezera, and then according to the sages, we'll see a machloket between Rav and Shemuel, um, uh, about what they say, the reasons for them, uh, two challenges to Rav that he'll answer, and then a tradition from Rav Yosef uh, regarding Shemuel. So pretty straightforward structure. Let's get into the content. Kol gagot ta'ir reshut achad, o bilbad shelo yehe gag gaboa asara, o namuch asara, dibred bimeir. So he says all the roofs, we're talking about attached roofs. If, you, if I have my own house and my own roof, then that's mine, obviously. I could walk around my roof um, and not, not, you know, your roof, which is the next house. But we're talking about attached homes where the roofs are all kind of together, you know, like um, uh, in a, you know, row houses and, and all, uh, you know, superhero movies as they're running across the roofs and jumping from one to the other. Um, okay, so they are all one to shoot. Um, as long as you don't have one higher and one lower uh, with a differential of more than 10 tefachim. Uh, let's look at our picture. So if you do have more than 10 tefachim, then that is now like a wall and creates a separate domain. This is yours, this is mine. And so then I cannot carry uh, without an eruv uh, between one and the other. Um, but if they're basically the same plane, uh, then it's all considered one. The Gemara will ask about this, like, you know, what's, what's the difference if it's more than 10 or less than 10? All right. Uh, that's what be opinion. Hachamim are more lenient, and they say, "Kol echad ve'echad reshut bifne atzmo." Sorry, more stringent. They say every single home is its own domain. You cannot walk from one, go from one to the other, and it doesn't matter if they're on the same level or one's higher than the other. You you are only allowed to carry on your own roof, not on your neighbor's roof. Okay, that makes sense because just like inside, the same would be on outside up on your roof. The Bishimon is the opposite, most lenient. He, or he says, Echad gagot, veechad chatserot, veechad karpefot, reshut achat hen lechelim sheshabtu letochan, velo lechelim sheshabtu betoch habayit. We saw the Bishimon quoted a number of times before, but this Mishnah is the main place. So he says, gagot, all gagot together um, are one domain, as long as it's for things that started off outside. So if when Shabbat began, I had a lawn chair uh, on, on my roof here, then I can carry it to the next roof and the next roof and all the roofs together, they're all one domain. What I cannot do is take a lawn chair from inside my house and take it outside and then take it from my roof to your roof to the next roof, okay? Um, so I can take it out, but not, then not move it around. But all outdoor areas combine as one, and that would seem even if there's more than 10 amot between 10 tefachim between my roof and the next roof, that's all permitted. Not only does it apply this, apply this to uh, roofs, but other outdoor spaces, enclosed outdoor spaces as well, like courtyards and karpefot, those kind of storage areas, um, all, each, each one has their own thing. So I can move from my courtyard to your courtyard to the next courtyard, or from my storage enclosure to yours to yours, but not from a roof to a courtyard, right? But those, as long as they're the same category, I can uh, walk, I can carry throughout them. So there you go, there's the three opinions. Rabbi Shimon says, yes, I can carry from one roof to, to another without, you know, no problem, as long as it was there, the item was there before Shabbat. Rabbi Chachamim is the opposite extreme. I can only carry on my rooftop and you can only carry on your, your rooftop. And the, in between is Rabbi Meir who says, it depends on the, on the architecture, if there's more than 10 tevachim between them.
All right. So we're going to start with Abim Eir and, uh, and, and analyzing Abim Eir. Yeteb Abaye Bad Abin Vedabi Hanina Bad Abin. Yeteb Abaye Gabai Hu. So these two uh, uh, sons of Abin were sitting and, and studying, and Abaye was, was also there. Vietbe Bekamade, the two brothers are there, and they're saying, Bishlamad Abanan Sabri Keshem Shediurin Hilachalukin Lemata, Kach Diurin Halukin Lemala. So according to the Mishnah, and they're saying, okay, we understand the opinion of the Chachamim that say you can only carry on your house. That makes sense. Just like the homes are divided below where we live in the indoor part, so too they're divided above. And so this is my house here. I can carry on my roof, right? It extends up. And so the walls of your house also extend up and divide your roof from my roof. So we understand that makes sense. Um, Ella, the Bimeir, my Kasabar. But what is the Bimeir thinking? Ikasabar Keshem Shediurin Halukin the Mata, Kach Diurin Halukin the Mala, Amaira Shut Achat Hen. If he thinks the same thing that we just said, Rachamim, that each home is its own area and extends up, then uh, why should you be able to carry from one to the other? Why would he consider it all one when they're, when, um, uh, you know, when they're on even uh, planes? What does it matter? And if he says that we don't uh, extend the, uh, the separation of indoors upwards, in other words, upwards, we're outdoors, and they're all, you know, they're all, on, all, all together now. Uh, it's not my roof and your roof, it's just a shared roof. Fine, if you think that, okay, then then what makes what difference would it make if one's higher and one's lower if they're all one shared rooftop then why can't i go and climb up ten tevachim to the next rooftop or below below to the next rooftop and why, why should that make any difference so that's the in between is always the hardest to explain the extremes are the, always the easiest right uh, but why would you distinguish in the in between area Okay, so uh, those two brothers were saying this, and Abaye was also sitting with them, and he said, oh, I have an explanation. So by answer, he says, oh, you must not have heard the, um, the, the, the tradition in the name of the Bimeir, who says any place that you have two domains that are one domain. What he means by that is that there um, is something that is, is one domain, but looks like two domains. How so? Like a Rishut uh, HaYachid, um, uh, I, I, a pillar in the Shutayachid. So let's say in my courtyard, uh, I have a, a private courtyard like this, and not like this, I don't have a picture, but let's say I have a courtyard, and uh, in my courtyard, which is a private domain, there is also a pillar, and the pillar is 10 uh, tefachim high and 4 tefachim wide. Okay, so that is itself a Rishut HaYachid. So I have a Rishut HaYachid within a Rishut HaYachid. So actually they're all one domain, because they're all enclosed right within one. Uh, but it looks like two because when I see this pillar that's big, I say, oh, that's its own domain. So he says, anytime you see something like that, you're not allowed to fix your load on it. So even though I'm carrying within my own courtyard, which is all the Shutayachid, and there's a big pillar there, I cannot rest my load on it. Why not? It's all mine. So technically you would be allowed to, but it's a gezera because of the shoot Rabim. If I allow myself, if I allow people to fix their uh, loads on, uh, on the, a pillar in a private domain, they may come to do it in a public domain as well. And so therefore we make a general gezera shava that anything that looks like uh, a private domain or separate domain, even within the same domain, we make a gezera because of the shoot Rabim. And so too in our case, when I'm, when I'm walking over here, he thinks technically it's all one domain. He really agrees with Rabbi Shimon, who's uh, Michaela says you can walk from roof to roof, but he's afraid. If we allow people to come here and walk and then even carry, uh, climb up Tent of Achim and carry there also, then you know what people are gonna think, oh, any place that's outdoors, I'm allowed to do that. And then when they're walking in the street 
and they see a pillar 10 Tavachim high, they're going to use that also, right? The same way they use it on the roof. That's why the Bimeir says that. In essence, he's Mekel, but he says a Gezera. That's all. Okay. Um, that is explains the Biakiva. Now, Amalehu Abaye. Oh, we did that. Okay. Sabur Mina, Afilu Machteshet, Afilu Gigit. Hold on. Now, um, uh, uh, but this is Abaye and Hanina. Yeah. Okay. So now the two stood the other the other uh, the other uh, sages who were speaking to Abaye. Uh, uh, so speaking to Abaye, were uh, said, "Oh, I guess he means by this that, um, or maybe Abaye also. Uh, oh, this he's also called Abaye. Abaye Abaravin and Chayna Abaravin were speak to, speaking to the famous Abaye. Okay. So yeah, the two students were sitting there listening. Says. Uh, I guess that even applies to a afilu gigit, even a mortar, even a vat. In other words, if I'm in my uh, in uh, in my courtyard and I have a barrel, and the barrel is ten tefachim high and four tefachim wide, then that would that mean that I am not allowed to rest my load on even the barrel, right? Uh, apparently, um, that would mean that. I mean, what would this? What would the kind? What are the consequences of this? Would this mean that if I'm walking around in my house on Shabbat and I'm carrying something, I can't rest it on a on a countertop, right? Because then I might one day go outside and do it, out, you know, and in in, uh, in the street. So I don't think it would it would apply to indoor space because that's different enough than outdoor space, right? But in my courtyard, I can't rest something on a table uh, outside. What if I'm, you know, want to eat outside and rest some uh, something on my table? You can tell me that that's not allowed. Uh, so he samadu abaye hachi amar mor lo amar bimir el amud ve amat arechaim o ilv adam kovea lehem makom. No, it wasn't. He didn't make this gezera on everything. Only permanent items, like uh, like a, a millstone, a millstone very heavy. You don't carry this around, right? Or a fixed pillar. Those things, if they are in your domain, you may not um, adjust your load on them because then you'll come to do it in Shut Rabim. But if it's just a barrel or a piece of furniture that's movable, then you don't have to worry about that. You didn't make a gizara in that case. Okay. kotel gagin karpefot My love, the shared taltule derech kotel, so hold on, if that's true, that you're not allowed to rest anything on a permanent structure, even though it's all within my domain, then what about this statement of Rabbi Huda, who says, if you go and analyze Rabbi Meir, you'll find that he says that all roofs are one domain. In other words, my roof and your roof, I can combine. My courtyard and the next courtyard over are all a single domain, and we can carry from one to the other. Now, regarding this one, so doesn't that mean that I can carry, even though there's a wall in between? And how am I going to get from one to the other? Aren't I going to have to put my load on the wall and then go to the other side and take it off? So you see that this is a Bimeir who says, I can rest something on a permanent structure that's within a courtyard. And you just said that a it makes a Gezera against doing anything like that. So we have an answer. No, there's an opening in the wall. There's a doorway. And so we can go from, from one to the other without resting it on the uh, permanent structure there in the courtyard. All right, good. So that concludes the discussion of Rabbi Meir. And now we're going to um, ask about the uh, Chachamim. Uh, so once again, Chachamim say every single rooftop is its own. Let's go back to the... Um, um, so the Chachamim are the most stringent and say that I, I, if I have a rooftop adjacent to your rooftop, I can only carry on my rooftop and not yours and vice versa, right? Or each rooftop is considered like an extension of my home. Just like I can't carry from my house to your house, so to the rooftop is my rooftop and your rooftop, they're separate domains. And so he disagrees with both Bimi and the Bishimon, the, the Chachamim do, who say that you can uh, theoretically carry from one to the other. All right, so now let's analyze according to the sages. The question is even within my rooftop, Rav says something uh, surprising that I can only carry four amot even on my own rooftop. All right, let's see. Shemuel disagrees. He says you can carry on the entire thing. All right, let's see why. 
איתם הרב אמר אין מטלטלין בו אלא בארבע אמות ושמאל אמר מותר לטלטל בכולו. So this is all talking about a case when we didn't make an eruv or anything. And so Rav says I'm only allowed to carry on my own rooftop for אמות and zero on your rooftop. Shmuel says I can carry on my entire rooftop but not at all on your rooftop. All right, so Shmuel seems to be the pshat. What is, what is Rav uh, going on? Okay, first, a nice clarification is important. If it's talking about, if there are partitions that can be seen, the nikarot, that are conspicuous. In other words, let's say I have my own detached house with a flat roof, and there are, I have walls all around um, my, my rooftop. Obviously, in that case, it's the same as a, an enclosed courtyard. I could carry around my entire roof. I don't have to worry about that. So we're not talking about that case where there are definite walls separating one rooftop to the other. What we are talking about is a case where we sh- we're all on the same, we're all attached houses and we share a rooftop. And um, the wall that's inside, my inside wall that's attached to your inside wall, our adjacent wall, does not extend up over the roof. And so when you're looking on top, or when you're on the roof, you can't tell where my house ends and your house starts. That's what he's talking, that's the case that they argue on. Okay, so a typical case, Rav is not so extreme as we thought now. A typical case of a, a single house, um, uh, Rav would be okay to carry on the whole thing. All right, and in this case, so what is the issue? Rav amad en matatilin bo ela ba'arba amot, lo amad gud asik mechisata. Ushmel amad mutal tatel bekulo, de amad gud asik mechisata. Okay, good. So, um, not good, but good. <laughs> so this we have a principle, good, asik mechitzata, means that the partition, asik, goes up. When you have a partial partition, as long as it's ten tefachim, we consider it as a legal fiction, as if it goes up to heaven. Like we use in our sukkah, when you only make half a wall, and you consider it goes up to heaven. So everyone agrees to that basic principle when you can see the wall. But what if, what if, how about when you can't see the wall, because it's uh, hidden underneath the roof? Let's see if we have a good picture. Um, okay, so if we have a separate domain, a separate house, and everyone agrees that you consider the wall, you can see the wall, it's an outside wall, even if it doesn't rise above, it goes up, right? It goes up, and so this is all I can, I can carry anywhere uh, on, my, on my roof. It would be a good idea to get a fence because it's dangerous, it might fall off, right? But technically, uh, it wouldn't even need that, it goes up. The question is now when they're attached. So I have outside walls, that's fine, but the one in the middle, um, okay, here, here it's obvious, I do see it. Um, but what about a case like this? We're gonna get to this specific case, right? So here there is a, a shared wall in the middle, but I can't see it. So in this, so in such a case, Shemuel would say, there is a wall underneath and that wall that's underneath goes up and therefore this whole space is enclosed. And so I can carry around the entire thing. Rav says, um, that I don't see any wall here, and so I cannot extend a hidden wall up to Shamayim, and therefore the wall that we, that adjoins both of our homes, this wall in between, cannot be extended, and therefore, since now it's all one big property, and, uh, and it's not clear which is mine and which is yours, we prohibit each other, and I can only walk four amot, for, like in the Rishut Rabim, I can walk four amot, that's it. All right, so good. Now we explained um, the, uh, uh, the reason for Rav and Shemuel. Next, we're going to have two questions on Rav. The first one from our Mishnah, and then from Abraita. Okay, asking from our Mishnah, Tenan. Chachamim omrim, kol echad vechad reshut le'asmo. So this machlok of the Rav and Shemuel are both trying to explain Chachamim, so he has to reconcile it. And Chachamim say, each one is its own domain. Okay, Bishlam al Shemuel nicha. Well, that makes sense. This is my domain. I can walk around the whole thing. Rav, how can you explain the language of the Mishnah that says it's my domain? My domain means I should carry around the whole thing. Why are you saying that I can't? How would you explain the wording of the Mishnah? When the Mishnah says that I, I, this one is my domain and that one is your domain, the point is there is, is to give a further limitation. I can only carry four amot in, in my domain. And furthermore, I'll say I'm here. I cannot carry anything at all into your domain. So 
Um, so uh, I can only then carry if I'm in the middle, you know, two amot and nothing into yours. Okay. Um, so that's that's the point of the Mishnah. That's how he reconciles the Mishnah. He's even more stringent, and that's what the domain means. Uh, okay. So once again, uh, when they are attached houses, I ca I cannot see the wall in between. So then I have to treat it like I'm in out like I'm outside in the middle of the street, and then only four amot and I further have to be stringent and, and the consensus is yours. Uh, I cannot walk anything into yours. So that's how he explains the language of the Mishnah. Okay. Beha, now the next question from Abraita. One time Rabbi Al-Azhar traveled to Bavel and over there they said, Be'edav, or maybe when he was young, he learned there, Be'edav Mishmed Rav Amru. This is interesting. Be'edav Mishmed Rav, the school of Rav and the, the name of Rav. This seems to be after uh, you know, the, the, the students of Rav and their, uh, the yeshiva said, Good, that's what we said already in the name of Rav. Whereas the school of Shemuel, Tanu means they had a baraita. And then their baraita, Tanaitic source, it says, they only have their roof, meaning you can carry anywhere you want on your own roof, but throughout the whole thing. And so you see here, Shemuel had a Badaita, which is authoritative, um, less authoritative than the Mishnah, but more authoritative than an Amoraic statement. Now, in some cases, we do say Rav is like a Tanan can argue, but we don't like to apply that too much if we can, if we can avoid it. Because although Rav was sometimes like a Tana, still he was not more Rav. So now the question is to Rav, since Shemuel has a Badaita that says you can carry around the whole roof, why does he say in this case that you can only carry for Amot? So we'll answer the same thing he did before. My enlahen gagan lav de sharu So when he says, when the Brayta says you have the roof, doesn't mean you have the whole roof like Shemuel. So we answer. This is what is your Brayta any stronger than the Mishnah? Mishnah had the same language, and we're able to solve the Mishnah. We said it means that I can't walk at all on your roof, not even two. Uh, mine and two on yours. And so too, the same thing here is, and the hen gagan doesn't mean I can walk on my entire roof. It means I can't walk at all on your roof. All right, good. So uh, now back to the outline. We've, uh, we have two challenges. We finished that. And now we're going to get to Rav Yosef um, and show that Rav Yosef oops, um, did not teach the uh, opinion of I lost. Okay, there we go. Rabbi Yosef did not teach the uh, Shemuel's opinion. Um, instead, uh, one owner can use all the roofs. Um, okay, let's see. What, let's uh, see this and explain it further. Okay, Amad of Yosef, la li ha shemata. He says, "I never heard this halacha of Shemuel that you can uh, uh, um, carry on your entire roof." Okay. Abaye, his student says, Rav Yosef, you forgot. Remember, we saw a lot of cases like this. Rav Yosef, in his old age, forgot a lot of, uh, a lot of his uh, teachings. And so sometimes his student had to remind him. And Abaye says, you taught this to us, this, this uh, halacha of Shemuel, that you can carry on your entire, your entire roof. And here's what you said it about. Gag gadol hasamuch lekatan. Mishnah later in this pedic is going to talk about the following case. We have a large roof um, adjacent to a small roof like this picture. I'm allowed to carry on all of the big roof, but I cannot carry on the small roof. Okay, uh, let's see why. And you, Yervasef, you quoted Shemuel in this regard, and you said, and you said, this is only if there are people that use the roofs uh, on both this roof and the other one, because in that case, the middle uh, is considered as if, as if it's trampled upon. All right, let's analyze this case a little further with the bigger picture. Okay, here. So we have a big roof and a small roof. Now, what's the, let's see what the law is. Um, the big roof um, has walls all around because where we have this entire wall, this entire with this entire wall, right? Even if it's not built up, it doesn't matter. The walls underneath will say good asik and they extend up. And so we have three full walls and we also have this partial wall and this partial wall. 
Okay, so in other words, for the Gag Gadol, we it's it's enclosed enough uh, without this uh, section uh, to, to be able to carry. However, from the perspective of the small one, what do we have? One, two, three full walls, but this side is problematic because it doesn't have its own wall, right? So you see that uh, um, uh, that this could have only three, and therefore, since it's not fully enclosed, that's why you cannot carry. That's what the Mishnah says. Now, on that, Shemuel said, this only applies that you can't carry here when there are people living up here and using both the big one and the small one. Why? Because then they keep walking back and forth. If you have an imaginary wall here, right, even if you think that the inside wall extends up, it'll work only if there are not people walking back and forth. If people are walking back and forth, it breaks the, uh, the, uh, the, the legal fiction. And so therefore, when people are walking back and forth, this wall is not existent. And this uh, small, ball, small one is only three, cannot be carried here. The big one you can still carry because you don't need this wall. You already have a par partial walls here and here. What's, the, what's our point? Our point is that Shemuel said, it's only a problem when people are walking here. But if it's empty, then it's OK. In other words, if it's empty, then you can consider this to go up to this middle wall that's hidden. You can consider it to be good asik, and then you would be able to carry both in the big one and even in the small one. So there you go. You see, Rav Yosef, you taught us this very law. You taught it to us about this Mishnah. You quoted Rav, and you gave this interpretation. And according to this interpretation, Rav thinks that, yes, you can walk, uh, carry an, an entire wall because we do imagine even uh, middle walls to go up and be extended. So that's what uh, his student says. Um, good. Aval, uh, right, if there's no diudin, then it's allowed. So Amar Leir of Yosef tells back to the student, Ana lehu. No, I remember, I'm not uh, that forgetful. I remember what I said now. Lo shanu ela sheyesh mechitza al zeh, mechitza al zeh, ve gadol mishtere begifufe, ve katan nifras bimloo. Aval en mechitza lo al zeh, velo al zeh, shenehen asurin. He says, this is what I really taught, taught you, Abaye, and you're the one that doesn't remember. I said that, when is this Mishnah true? Um, that you can't, that you cannot carry only when there's no walls. But if there is wall, if there are walls all around, right, then it's okay. Um, um, so, right, so in this case, uh, the big one you can carry around the whole thing, right? Because that's fine, that has walls no matter what. The small one would still be a problem because you have three walls and you don't have a middle wall. So you see that according to this, the middle wall is not counted. You don't say good asik uh, regarding the middle wall. And so you can only carry around the big one when, and this is talking about when there are actually physical walls. And so you see it's the opposite of what you said, uh, Abaye. And so therefore you cannot derive that um, as we say good asik for hidden walls. Um, all right, that's what I love yourself says back. And then Abayek says, no, no, I remember better. I was there, I remember what you said. And you said something about diurin. And you said something about the people living there or not living there, that makes a difference. So it's not just about there being walls. So Rav Yosef thinks about it a minute and says, okay, fine. If I had mentioned something about people living there, then this is, must be, he's trying to reconstruct what he himself said. This must be what I said. So here's what I said. The law of the Mishnah that you can carry on the big one, but not the small one, is only when I made proper walls, a wall that can withstand a person leaning on it. That So I'm expecting to use it both on this one and on that one. In that case, I can use the big one because it has the enclosure all around and not the small one, right? So that's when the Mishnah was talking about. But if the small one, I made a flimsy wall, right? One that I would not expect anyone not to actually go up there and use. So then if the people that live in the small house made a flimsy wall, that shows that they're not expecting to use it. 
So therefore they relinquish their right to it. If they relinquish their right, then the people in the big one can you can carry in theirs and in this one, they can carry throughout the whole thing. That's what I was talking about when I said diurin, are people gonna be living there or not? And the people of the little one don't intend to live to, to use it, then it's permitted. And that's what I meant. And I did not say anything about the hidden wall. And so don't misquote me. I never heard of this law of Shemuel. And that's the final conclusion here that Av Yosef did not know about that halacha. All right. Um, and uh, okay. And this uh, accords with Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman sulam hutar bechol hagagin kulan. So Rav Nachman says, if I have a bunch of adjoining, if there are a bunch of adjoining rooftops, uh, let's go back to the first uh, picture. All right, a bunch of adjoining rooftops, and let's say I own this one. And I go and I get a ladder and I make a ladder to my rooftop and nobody else does. Well, that shows that I want to use the rooftop and no one else does. So that means they don't care about their rooftops. They don't use them. Most people don't. So there, if I do that and no one else does, then I get to use all of them. Okay, so that shows that I'm using them and no one else does. So this will be the similar thing to what Rav Yosef said. If I make a nice wall on mine and you make a flimsy wall on yours, also I can use all of them. And one last application of the same principle. Mar Abaye, Bana Aliyah Al Gabe Beto, Daka Arba, Utar Bechola Gagin, Kulan. If I go and make a little bit of an extension on top of my roof, like this, and so I have I make an enclosure and I make an opening to uh, the next guy's rooftop. I own this one only. And so I make an opening to the next one. And I'm the only one that does that. Nobody else does that. Then that shows that I want to use my rooftop. And I made an opening, it shows I would use your rooftop. And no one else made any enclosure in their rooftop, so they don't care about theirs. So that would be a similar case. I'm allowed to use all of them. And this would be seen even according to Chachamim. Because Chachamim say in general, I can only use my rooftop. That's because you're going to use your rooftops that were separate. But if you don't, you don't care about it. It's all outdoors. It's all enclosed, one big enclosure. Then I can use all of them. Uh, so that's the uh, that's helpful. And then uh, Rava adds a last comment. Sometimes that um, that thing that you build with an opening can actually work the other way around and make make you prohibited. If I make an opening that's facing the other way towards the garden like this, then that shows that I don't want to use your rooftops. And then in that case, I would be prohibited from using your rooftops. It means I want to make this so that I can uh, access my garden. Okay, well, you don't want to just walk out here. You might fall down, but maybe you want to have a view to your garden or make a ladder or something or other. Um, but the, uh, the, the way the, the, the point is that the opening is not on this side. And so, uh, so this can work both ways. It's an indication of what you have in mind as opposed to what everybody else has in mind. Um, and so these rooftops are a really interesting uh, uh, case where um, uh, where uh, it's on the one hand, the kind of in between. It's a private domain, but it's also shared with others. It's enclosed, but not exactly enclosed because they're not necessarily walls, it's imaginary walls. So all these cases I'm not making in Eruv, but the usage and intention of the people that live there are what define whether uh, one person can access and carry along all of them or not. Uh, one last comment is I interpreted the word Daka here as that according to Dashi, which is enclosure with an opening, there are other commentaries that say it's some kind of a wall. Um, but uh, anyway, that's a, a different um, that's a different discussion. Uh, just so you know that that there are other explanations of it. Baruch Adonai Amen, Amen, and uh, we'll continue the ninth pedic tomorrow. <laughs>